Many of you may have heard of Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada. But have you ever thought about driving beyond it to explore its neighbor Jasper National Park? With its stunning beauty and lots of unique things to do, Jasper National Park is definitely a place you wouldn't want to skip. We spent 48 hours at this Canadian National Park and let us show you how we spent and enjoyed every minute of this trip. From spring to autumn, getting to Jasper would mean driving on the, one of the most breathtaking roads in the world, the Icefields Parkway. From Calgary, Jasper is 190 miles northwest and from Banff, 120 miles. In the winter, the Icefields Parkway is breathtakingly gorgeous and picturesque, but when driving conditions aren't safe, getting to Jasper may involve a detour through the Saskatchewan River crossing, which is a 256 mile drive. From our base in Lake Louise, we started very early to make the most of our day at Jasper National Park. Prior to driving on the Icefields Parkway, here are the most important things to remember. Number one, there is only one gas station on the Icefields Parkway on the Saskatchewan River crossing, which is halfway between Banff and Jasper. Number two, there are very few restrooms along the way and they are mostly located in each tourist stop. Number three, stock up because there are only two places to shop and eat on this drive which are at the Saskatchewan River Crossing and at Columbia Icefield. And lastly, phone reception here is very poor, and the chances of using internet are very minimal. On our way to our first destination, we stopped at Big Bend Peak, a 2,800 feet mountain summit with amazing views. To our right, we spotted the Weeping Wall, a set of cliffs with several cascading waterfalls. In the winter, this turns into a wall of ice, a haven for ice climbers. We were really excited about exploring our first stop, the Columbia Ice Field. Our first activity involved a tour of the majestic yet endangered Athabasca Glacier. To get to the glacier, we had to form our lines in the visitor center and then we boarded a bus that took us to the base. From the base, we transferred to this heavy-duty looking glacier bus with massive wheels. The ride to the glacier was slow, scenic, a little bumpy sometimes, but it was very safe. However, it involved going down a very steep hill, which was very thrilling. Our tour guide Sadie gave us a wealth of information about the glacier, why it is endangered, and their efforts to hopefully save it. Setting foot on the glacier was an amazing experience. Even though we couldn't walk past the barriers, we were still awestruck. If you do decide to go on this tour, I recommend taking a water bottle with you. During certain times of the year, it is possible to gather ice-cold glacier water from the little streams of melted ice. Too bad we saw none of this on our trip there. But hey, it was still worth it. On our way back to the base, we spotted some scientists from NASA who were conducting an undisclosed environmental experiment. I wonder what it was. From the Athabasca Glacier, we were taken to the Icefield Skywalk. Note, there are no parking spots at the Skywalk. You can only access this by taking the glacier tour. The scenic stroll to the glass walkway was exhilarating. We couldn't help ourselves from taking in the spectacular views of the cliffs, the mountains, the river, and the waterfalls. The closer we got to the skywalk, the more excited we became.
The glass walkway is built on the cliff edge, standing 280 meters or 918 feet above the Sun Wapta Valley. It's a pretty short walkway, but we all enjoyed seeing the views below our feet. We had to go back several times. Unfortunately, some people were not as enthusiastic as we were. From the ice field skywalk, we took another bus to take us back to the visitor center. Now remember when I said earlier that there are no restrooms and or places to eat on the ice fields parkway, the Columbia Ice Field Visitor Center is where you could find a cafe, a restaurant, a souvenir shop, and some restrooms. Just a couple of miles past the skywalk, on our way to Jasper Town, we came across Tangle Creek Falls. From the side of the road, we took an easy climb to the top and enjoyed the cascading waterfalls. We were so mesmerized and enthralled by the stunning scenery, we had to make several stops before we arrived at our next destination. Sun Wapta Falls is a stunning natural attraction nestled within Jasper National Park. The falls cascade in two distinct stages, offering visitors a breathtaking view of the powerful, glacial-fed waters surrounded by lush mountain scenery. The river diverges due to an islet before the descent, and this, together with the glacial blue waters, makes Sun Wapta Falls breathtakingly unique. There are several viewpoints of the lower and upper falls, where you can enjoy different vantage points and unique glimpses of the river and the falls. And in addition to the bridges and viewpoints, you can also hike down to get close to the surging water. And after enjoying views of the river and the waterfalls, we ended our visit by taking a short hike through the woods. We have so many more adventures to share with you. Subscribe to our channel to get notifications of our upcoming videos. And remember, the journey is just as important as a destination. Enjoy all that is around you before your journeys end. The 
Athabasca Falls are an extremely powerful and picturesque waterfall to witness. Athabasca Falls are known for their strength due to the large quantity of water. Even when Athabasca River levels are at their lowest in the autumn, large amounts of water still flow over the falls. These falls are very easy to access and there are plenty of viewpoints. We walked down to the river through the small canyons and marveled at the amazing rock formations. While Ethan and Adrian got closer to the river, I just peacefully sat on a rock, took the time to absorb the view, and breathe in that fresh air. And on the way back to the parking lot, we admired the turquoise waters and the strong flow of the Athabasca River. One of the things we enjoyed most about Jasper National Park was the amount of wild animals that we saw. We were very lucky to see a moose along the side of the road and grazing by the river. And while most of us know that Canada is where a lot of bears live, and by a stroke of luck, we saw a beautiful bear having a quiet snack, we actually didn't think we would see one. Plus, there were lots of elk everywhere. Remember to never approach the animals, especially during mating season. Just look at what happened to this guy who got too close. Medicine Lake is a glacially formed lake known for its crystal clear waters and captivating mountainous surroundings. What makes Medicine Lake unique is its mysterious disappearing act during the winter months. Because of an intricate underground drainage system, the lake's water level dramatically drops leaving behind a series of meandering streams and rivulets. In the spring, the lake miraculously refills, creating a breathtaking tableau of reflections against the backdrop of the Canadian Rockies. Before heading to Jasper National Park, we were told numerous times to make sure to visit Maline Lake, and I'm glad we did. We booked a boat tour to Spirit Island and arrived a little early, so we had a quick lunch at their really nice lakeside cafe. After our meal, we then strolled along the lakeshore and noticed that apart from the boat tours, kayaking was a favorite activity here. It was finally time to hop on our boat tour, and off to Spirit Island we went. The boat ride was calm, serene, educational and entertaining, thanks to our awesome captain and our amazing tour guide. Straight ahead of us. All right. Now you may notice on the side of our... 
once we arrived at Spirit Island, we were given 15 minutes to walk on the shoreline and quietly explore. Spirit Island, a small islet adorned with coniferous trees, is an iconic feature that draws photographers and nature enthusiasts. And wow, just look at those views. Maline Lake spans 22 kilometers and boasts crystal clear turquoise waters that reflect the surrounding majestic mountains. The lake gives visitors a tranquil escape into the heart of nature, with opportunities for boat cruises, hiking, kayaking, and wildlife appreciation in one of Canada's most breathtaking landscapes. Close to Maline Lake is a must stop, the Maline Canyon, which is a geological marvel and a must visit destination for those seeking awe inspiring natural wonders. Carved over eons by the Maline River, the canyon features sheer limestone walls that plunge up to 50 meters deep. A network of narrow winding trails and footbridges allows visitors to explore the canyon's depths, treating visitors like us to breathtaking vantage points of its cascading waterfalls and sculpted rock formations. The canyon's beauty is accentuated by lush vegetation clinging to the canyon's walls, creating a vibrant contrast to the rugged terrain. And of course, we made sure that the last thing we did on that day was to visit the lovely and quaint Jasper Town. And right in the middle of a pretty busy road is quite possibly the largest and tallest elk I have ever seen. We actually thought it was a moose. Jasper is visibly less busy and a lot quieter than Banff. However, it is still full of homely mountain charm. With a few shops and charming restaurants, it is definitely worth a visit. It is also pretty affordable compared to Banff. We were quickly running out of time, so we paid a brief visit to Patricia Lake to watch the sunset. Sadly, we didn't have time to visit the world-famous Jasper Sky Tram, which was a total shame because we've heard that the views from the top of Whistler Mountain are breathtaking. But I'm including it in this video just so that you won't miss out on it like we did. We hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to our channel to see more. Thanks again for watching and we can't wait to see you again soon. Stay curious and keep exploring.